All right, everybody. Welcome back to the weekly community hangout for Dalton Collective. Just going to share my screen. And then, uh, then, yeah, we'll get things moving. All right. So she should all be able to see what I've got here. Cool. All right, so what brings us here today? Well, um, we're here to build a group that is uh, that supports each other, supports each other in a lot of different ways. But one of those ways is financial. The other is just sort of emotional, social. And uh, to do it on our own terms. So right now that means we do this, we do this on the internet because we are able to organize in a way that works for us. So that's not tied to any one place um, specifically, meaning like geographically, and we can organize around interests, things that we want to do. Um, hopefully, that make us enough money that we can support each, support each other financially. So today, um, I wanted to talk quickly about some things that I've been thinking about this week that are specifically related and kind of you uh, have some bearing on the Dalton Collective. So this image is of the uh, Dark Forest. If you've never read the Dark Forest theory of either uh, cosmological Dark Forest theory, meaning an answer to the Fermi paradox, or the internet is a Dark Forest, both of those things are worth checking out. Today, we basically wanted to talk about the internet as a Dark Forest. Uh, and I'll just re recap of what that sort of is. Or maybe I should, I'll start with the Fermi paradox. So the Fermi paradox being like, you know, if you plug in all of the uh, possible number of planets in in the solar in the in the universe, and the percentages of those that have life, and how those that should have complex life, multicellular life, civilizations, and all those sorts of things, and if you plug in all of those variables, or at least to the best of your under your you know knowing that you the, of what we can observe in the observable universe, we come up with some idea about that there should be a lot of life out there. I mean, a lot of life. They're just so many stars and so many galaxies. But the question really becomes, well, what, where are they? Um, you know, maybe some people say they've already been here and they're already visiting, and I suppose that's true, but it's not at least widely accepted that that's the case. So where are all these, where are all these aliens? That's, that's the Fermi paradox. And one of the answers to the Fermi paradox is that yes, the universe is teeming with life, but there are a few very, very hostile entities out there and all of the life that has discovered that these hostile entities exist is hiding, similar to what happens in a dark forest at night. All of the animals that are prey hide because they are hiding from the predators. It is not that the forest is dark and dead. What is dark? But it's not dead. It is very much alive, but they are hiding. Uh, and that is what's happening right now in the cosmological scales, that all of the life out there is, is looking for a place to be out of sight. Uh, and that we, as a quote-unquote advanced civilization, should be thinking about what kinds of signals we are putting out into the universe. And there are lots of sci-fi books about this, um, one of which being the three-body problem, which I would also recommend people taking a look at. And how that relates to the internet as a dark forest um, is something akin to what we see in something like cancel culture, and then extending that out to what might that look like at its furthest extremes. So right now, people, if they say things that are against the sort of mainstream or whatever that is, you know, they may be deplatformed. A lot of people might scream at YouTube or something else to remove these people from YouTube and or from some other Twitter, something like that. So that's what it means to sort of be deplatformed or um, to be canceled in this sort of cancel culture. And, and uh, the internet, uh, I see this as a sort of a macro trend on the internet for the most part. You know, perhaps even talking about it like we are today could at some point become uh, a sort of cancelable offense. But uh, the reason why um, the Dalton Collective is organized in a way such that it has is to is to sort of uh, prevent against this sort of thing from happening, either arbitrarily or specifically. It doesn't really matter how it happens. Uh, it's important that if you're trying to either make a living or do something productive on the internet, that you can do so without fear of sort of a big hammer coming down. And that's a lot of the reason why we use Urbit, right? And so the last week or so, you've, there's 
may have seen some of these sort of high profile um, subreddits being taken down for the content that's being posted there. And it kind of seems like this, this trend is accelerating a bit. And as platforms and as things like Twitter and YouTube and Reddit are becoming the only places where people can sort of talk anymore, and then those things are becoming harder and harder to actually say anything, that more and more people are leaving, and that the attention is is kind of constricting around what's whatever that that's left, and it's like it's getting hotter and more sort of molten in in the the, the places that are still that where people are still talking kind of more or less openly. So maybe maybe Twitter is a good example of that, or or Reddit for that matter. But that um, a strategy of being as independent as possible, as well as sort of staying out of the light as possible, I think is probably something um, to be thinking about, and at least something I've been thinking about over the last week, and specifically related to the Dalton Collective. So that's what I've got. Uh, the next item on the agenda I wanted to talk about is to talk about preparations for this weekend. So July 4th is the date we picked to transfer the Dalton Star to the multi-sig. Uh, and then also to set uh, SickDev Pilnup as manager and Rabsef Bikram as proxy. Is it just spawn proxy? So those are the things that we're going to have happen. We're going to record it so that we have it for you know posterity. <laughs> Uh, but we need, do need to sort of like just walk through it, I think, um, since we've got three of the multi-sig folks here, um, maybe take this opportunity to, to, to do that and to, um, to make sure we all feel comfortable actually making that happen. So do we need um, Ravnus and Fable to be there? No. I, I I reconstituted the multi sig um, channel. I don't know if that actually. I don't know it. if I added it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, that was sort of my like, hey guys, this is happening thing. I'll reach out to them specifically one on one, but it's not required. Meaning, meaning I don't think it's necessary because we have the 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 three that we need. And I've I come I've come to see Robness and Fablet as as sort of backups and almost as like interested, trusted third parties to Dalton as opposed to first parties. Yeah. Like just about everybody here is, is something more like first party, meaning like a member. Is that multi-sig a group or is it a chat? It's a chat and, a, and it's a standalone. It's not within Dalton itself. It's just like Dalton, I think multi-sig chat or something like that. I have to. I, I don't have it listed. I'll have to. Well, maybe yeah. I do. Let me. I'll find it anyway. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I think it was hosted under SickDev, which okay. is which you know made means it got nuked, and then I reconstituted it. Right. I may or may not have seen it. It's not that big a deal. I think the only thing I want to make sure is we've gone through this before, but it's been a while um, since we did it. But it's. I mean, it's the. It's actually, I don't think it's actually that complicated. Um, no. It's just uh, important. <laughs> and we're now signing it through the standard wallet, not yeah. notes is safe. Right. So we were in the, the prior version of things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's do it. What What time are you thinking? Okay. Well, let's look at a calendar. So the fourth is on a Saturday. I already confirmed that I have no plans, but we should probably do it during the day since you know maybe you do want to go outside and watch some fireworks someplace or if you do have plans for those that are Americans, that is. Um, so, you know, like... What time zones? Are you? Christian, you're, you're Eastern time zone right now? Yeah. Okay. So maybe but, um... like... You can do a bit earlier, like a so like a nine a.m. Pacific would be twelve Eastern, and I think that's ten for you, Rabsif, right? Yeah, yeah. Do you get up by noon? <laughs> <laughs> um, 
usually. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the problem right now is I've actually like intentionally like made my uh, sleep schedule later because my client is in New Zealand. Ah, uh, interesting. Okay. Well, would later later in the day work for you, better for you? No, noon's no, no, fine. Noon's fine. I can, well, I can let's do it. like um, ten a.m. So that'd be one one Eastern, uh, eleven Mountain. Yep. Okay. Yeah. That's definitely doable. A.M. Pacific, and I'll I'll message this as well. Um, July fourth. So well, we, the, we sorry. Go ahead. So the only thing we we'll do is we'll come together. Um, and everybody will be invited. And then, um, so what we'll do is we'll actually work through it, like do the transactions live, and then I'll prepare some some statement or some something to mark the occasion, and then that'll be it. <laughs> Should we broadcast it here and record it here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Cool. Yeah. The same link. Um, open invitation bit of a working kind of session so we'll just you know get get through it and then uh, at the end I'll say a few words and from there on out it'll be multi-sig with any for any um, well I guess uh, it'll, it'll be multi-sig we'll only have to do something in, in the change of change of ownership because I'll be able to do anything related to Ames keys and then wraps if you'll be able to do with anything with regards to uh, what is it uh, spawning yeah, we, generating planets yeah cool all right cool all right so the next thing was planet sales yeah so got a star want to donate it to the group so we can start making some income and also two notes i have uh i'll pin in my head though but um, yes, I have a star. I would like to sell its planets and have the revenue go to Dalton. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a brand new, fresh star. Would need to run it, but I have a server I can run it on, so that's that's fine. Um, and the question is just what's the best way to do that? We could do it through Urbit Live, like we were kind of talking about, or Sarpen, if you can... Uh, build something up for us, I'd be happy to find some, you know, amenable revenue sharing program to pay you as developer, but then also pay Dalton Collective as uh, primary owner of the utility. Um, we could also use it as a test case of, of transferring it to the multi-sig um, before we do Dalton, if you want, like just to make sure that it can get there. And you know, with with one that we care a little less about than the the eponymous one, um, but that's the idea. I think it would just be good if we started a revenue stream as soon as possible. We can sell these for whatever price the market price is. I'm not interested in making a profit per se. I'm interested in Dalton making uh, an investment. Hmm. Um, so I have some a few things to add to that. I think. If we were to go, I, I do like the idea of just going it our own way, um, just because that seems to be more with the ethos of what we're kind of about. So we could use Dalton.org for this purpose, meaning, you know, whatever the Web3 stuff required for that, we, we could put it there. And um, I think, uh, Sarpen, you should just let us know if this is something you're willing to, to look at, and I can help with that too, just put together what sort of uh, compensation would be required. And then as the planet sales come in, we your let's say your invoice would be funded through those sales until it's completed. And then then the rest would go to the, the multi-sig, I suppose. Uh, the only the other thing I want to possibly consider is we could do two things, one being just the planets themselves and the other being hosting. We, we could potentially start thinking about offering hosting as a service as, as well. I'm not sure we're quite ready for that, but yeah, it's it's possible. We should at least talk about it. I think, like just personally, that seems like a a operation that is 
somewhat more difficult than what we're proposing with just sales. Um, yeah. Insofar as that's the case, I think it'd be great if we could roll out one first, and then even if we're still targeting the other one, move towards that after we have the first one in place. Um, it would also help us pay invoices a little faster if we had a you know a stash of money rather than having to pay off of the initial proceeds. So if we can pay off the first investment and then invest some more and then use that to pay fully for the development of the hosting space, that would be awesome. You're muted, Christian. Um, for the hosting, like, you know, I mean, I'm not, like, for this one, I'm, in, like, super concerned about RevShare. Like, I'm kind of, like, bought in. I, can, I don't mind. But, like, you know, Rev says buying himself in with the star and me buying myself in with my blood and sweat or something. But, <laughs> but like, the, um, I, I mean, like, with hosting, it's, like, we got to look at like options more thoroughly, but like one is like, you know, like a, a, a digital ocean drop droplet is like five bucks a month. So you like do 10 bucks a month, like you know, you're already making like a little bit of margin. So it's not like, you know, you're going to have to like pay up for the, 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 uh, it's not like you're going to have to like pay up too much of like the, for like invoices and whatnot until you gain enough traction. The other thing there is kind of like, well, like, you also just like run it on if you get like a really good like machine, you know, it's like you could you could run like basically however many cores you have that many plants, you know, that many ships. Um, because it's like single threading, so it's like you would want each one running on its own core. Um, but if you do that, yeah, that would work pretty well, I think. You know, and and so you you even run it like multiple ones on a single ship. Just set up like the engineering proxy. Um, and one consideration that I mean, you know, I, you know, like uh, it sort of depends on like how things here sort of go, but like uh, or, like how how quickly we can move, which I'm not like one hundred percent sure on. This the selling is pretty easy, um, but the other side would be like, you know, the uh, it would set up like basically a contract with like, the management proxy, and then like you know just like basically like people like do like you know like uh, uh, uh like stuff like transfer ETH over or transfer die or whatever, and, and then that gets moved over into the multi sig, you know, and so then it's like you know like the management proxy can just like do the spawning and and then do the it can, can both do the spawning and then also transfer the funds. Um, I kind of digress. Um, but like, yeah, the other, the other point is like, like, it might be like, you know, like, it, it is like difficult for like economics or like market question. Like, would we be better off sort of maybe like, you know, holding the planets and holding the potential users and like tackle the hosting solution like ourselves and thus like generate more revenue. Like, because then like other users might end up developing a relationship with like Dropbox or something and like it's like you can't like call all of them back. But then on the other hand, those users might go and buy penance off Urban Live anyway. So it's like, you know, it's, it's just sort of a, a consideration. Well, we could always like earmark, you know, n number of the planets for that hosting solution. Like, we got sixty-five thousand of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's true. It, true facts. It's very optimistic to think that any sales that we make early on will will outweigh the potential for the hosting solution. But I hear your point. Um, yeah, no, I, I think ultimately, I'm like maybe. Uh, yeah, no, I, I think I think you're right. I think you're right. It was just like a thought I had in the back of my mind. Man. And that I do want to be uh, um, cognizant of any conflict of interest here as well, i.e. myself, um, and potentially, I guess, even Mark here, since we work for Talon and Talon is planning to do this sort of thing. As far as I know, they don't have any problem with third parties doing hosting. Um, but... 
I would need to make sure if we do go the hosting route that I'm okay with, you know, my employer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. like, they might say, okay, that's fine. But then you have no access to, you know, whatever the hosting stuff that they're working on is, which at the moment, I don't know that I do, but, and I don't know how <laughs> it works. So it's not an issue. Um, but I do know that there's at least some idea of having some secret sauce within Talon, meaning mostly on the DevOps side of how to actually manage these things that we would not um, have access to. Yeah, which I think is reasonable. I think I think Talon is perfectly entitled to having their own secret DevOps sauce. Right, and which I would suggest we do the same, um, meaning there might be some tools that are generally shared amongst the community about maybe like, I don't know what those would be, but there probably should be, but then there should be things that we do on the back end to make, to manage these things in a, in a certain way. That's, that's our business. That's the way we do it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Mark, what do you think? Do you think that's reasonable slash acceptable? That sounds perfectly reasonable and acceptable to me. Yeah. I mean, if like Swan is doing the secret sauce, and of course Dalton can play that game too. Cool. All right. Well, let's maybe um, pick one thing we can set our sights on to accomplish with this, uh, and and move, and try to hit a deliverable. I guess. One other thing before we pick that, there's another option on the table. There was someone in chat saying they were looking for project management on a project that they're working on. And there was another guy who contacted me about having some sort of co-coding for, I forget what his application was. Anyway, the, the option that's on the table is, should we start trying to help project manage the development of applications for a nominal fee uh, as an as like an early step or mm -hmm. should we target this other thing i think given that we have limited resources in terms of manpower you can only do so many at once until we get more people actively working on these things mm -hmm. so what do you think well i do have a, so a friend of mine that i've been his his name is well i won't say his name <laughs> But a friend of mine um, that I used to work with has been getting into Urbit recently. Like I'm hosting a ship for him right now. He's kind of tootling around, but he's got some, um, he's got a lot of HR experience. Uh, he doesn't have a ton of dev um, management experience or project management experience, but he's been doing a lot of learning around that. Anyway, I've been talking to him about the Dalton Collective, about the stuff that Sarpin is working on with uh, the bundling project, which I've codenamed Project Sarpin. I didn't ask, but that's what I've done. <laughs> and he might be a good possible like person to reach out to to say, hey, you know, we've got some people here looking for a project manager. What do you think? If we do it under this umbrella, we can offer you some sort of like, you know, legal. I guess we don't actually have any legal umbrella at this moment, but if we did, then we could offer you some sort of you know, exchange here. Uh, but even still, I'm I'm also interested in that. I just want to make sure that if I commit to anything, then I can actually um, do it well. Sarpen, how busy are you right now? <laughs> You're on mute again. <laughs> yeah, I noticed. I noticed. Goddamn muted. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm right now. I'm like quite busy, but like in another week, two weeks, uh, I'll be done with this contract, uh, and then be like looking to do, like get more involved with like the bundle. Like, like we got, like, we, we can talk about this later. But like we made like a good amount of progress in like I guess like weighing the cost of like options of implementation like essentially like like gas costs okay it moves so what do, <clears throat> what's our timeline for like what are you setting a deliverable what what scope should we be aiming for should we be aiming for the end of july as like the scope or 
I think the next week. Honestly, I think for like this project, like outside of styling, maybe, but even the styling, Jake kind of does have a style. I think help could maybe help some. Um, maybe he, you know, we could make the rev share go to him or something because I'm trying to get some cash in his pocket. Um, but uh, I mean, I think it's not terribly complicated at all. Like, you could probably write the contract in a day and just like some like web three bullshit, like. You know, and maybe with even like intricate stripe, you know, like it, it, it really would not be very difficult. I don't think. Like the, for the planet sales. So why don't we do this? Okay, that makes sense. Maybe you can come up with what what arrangement would be comfortable for you and everyone involved, and then we can figure out how we're going to fund that and get started on drafting a contract to, to make that viable. Yeah, yeah. And by contract, I don't mean like legal contract. I mean like smart contracts. No, I know, but I meant like a legal contract to employ you to make the smart contract. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, yeah, sure, yeah. We can, we can definitely, uh, yeah. I mean, if you're happy to work on the table, I'm happy to work on the table too, but, you know, I don't... I, whatever would be best for, I, I just think it would be good for yeah. Dalton to start engaging with contractors too. You know what I mean? Even yeah, though it's yeah. not a legal entity yet. Yeah. And like, the thing is, is like, I think, you know, as long as we like have like our ducks in a row by like next like tax season, then like we, you can just like retroactively like fit, like whatever payments were done. Wow. That's actually a really good point. Should we form the legal entity? Like, we should probably definitely should, like, before, like, I don't know, like, what is it, like, January 19th or whatever, whenever 1099s are due. Yeah. But, like, until then, like, I mean, like, it's basically, like, like, September starts hitting, like, then it's like, okay, like, we be, we really need to get our shit together. Yeah, for sure. Well, I, I do like the certain... Um orderedness of transferring the multi-sig and then meaning it's real now it's the dalton collective or the collectively owned star and then the next thing it is is an actual legal entity that can do work in this quote-unquote real world and then we have a contract to do something so it could be, um wraps if that you and i do some legal work and then sarpin as you start finishing up this other stuff just be thinking about planet sales and then we can revisit that as soon as because i think it could take i think legal stuff could be a nice little two two week little project right for sure yeah mm -hmm. so why don't we do something sarpin yeah i was just gonna say that like what i i think that like with partnerships like it, it could even just be verbal like a verbal like yes. Bit for like a partnership which okay we probably want a little bit more than that you know but like like I mean, I think that like with a partnership, you don't necessarily like as opposed to like an LLC, which we could probably, I think, you know, convert to an LLC at some point, right? From my understanding, but like if like you know, like it's we're still rather small. Like the low overhead option might be just like you know we draft together like a partnership document, and say like okay, that's what it is, and then it's just like we all sort of bind ourselves to like yeah, we're going to ninety nine people and like make sure everything gets sorted. I'm asking one of my law school friends if he'll incorporate us for a low amount. Well, that'd be nice. Mm -hmm. He's a pretty good lawyer, too. He made partner this year. He's only been a lawyer for three years. No, it's been like five years now. I just forget how much time has passed. Uh, okay. Well, I'll take this down as in the notes, too, for the in the meeting notebook. Mm -hmm. So then, so then, short-term plans. Saturday at uh, 10, 10, 11, 1. 10, yeah, 11. We'll, <laughs> yeah, we'll do the uh, transfer. Mm -hmm. um, we're gonna try and figure out how the best way and the cheapest way and the most effective way to form a legal entity as soon as possible. After that, and then midterm is we start selling planets to make a revenue stream for that entity. Yeah, and then further after that, sky's the limit. That's right. Have you noticed how, like, with all this DeFi stuff, how, like, egregious gas costs are getting? <laughs> yeah. Dude, I, I have to, I, like, I like, 
Don't, don't, I have like five dollars of ETH, and I was like crossing my fingers, hoping this like contract wouldn't get reverted, but it did. So I just like wasted five dollars. And so like, <laughs> this is like my first like actual money like coming into my pocket like from a DAO in like quite some time. And like I can't even like I don't even have like enough money to like make the proposal to like get the money from the DAO. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, so in the in the early days of maker we were we had no interface for the multi-sig it was command line and i would just so you would set the gas price and the gas limit manually right and occasionally i would do like i this is my own horror story about gas prices i i miss i so an order of magnitude increased the gas price on accident and i just had a standard gas limit of like five million or something and it ended up messing up the transaction and spending like eight hundred dollars on gas <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah yeah so i've done it i've done it it wasn't quite the two and a half million or whatever we saw recently but yeah I think I, that's I, what was that i think that's my, the two million is money laundering no, it's not. I don't think it's money laundering. I think it's um, extortion. I thought, I, is this what? I'm sorry. Extortion. Extortion. Yeah. So the the story that I heard, which makes the most sense, was that the hackers, whoever they are, got into this exchange's system, but they couldn't get around for whatever access they had. It was still within a whitelist, they can, so they can transfer tokens, right? And so what they're doing, or what they had done, is transfer a few between these their whitelisted accounts but throw away most of the money and then they contact the exchange that says well if you don't want this to happen again you know pay up i think that's what uh, that makes sense that makes sense makes total sense of course, but, but the interesting thing yeah. was that they, they they looked and they saw actually the miner was the same like every for single like time multiple, for like multiple of these over like a period of year uh i and that, so that's and weird so, but how and else would you, like, you can't, you can't, you can't guarantee that your miner is going to have. You can, you just broadcast it only to your miner. It's like, oh, that, it, yes, I, okay, okay, yes, you can. It, but it, but it, these it, it difficult, but. But were the, the blocks mined or were they just. Yeah, yeah they're mine, they're oh. mine. So, okay, so basically right. it's just like disguising, like, a, it's like a transfer, but like, it's not a transfer because it's gas fees. And so like. I, yeah, okay. Yeah, an SEC maybe is not, or AML people are not smart enough to know that. Oh, I just understood what was happening. And this is fascinating. So you only broadcast the transaction to your miner, thereby ensuring that that's the one that captures the block. And then you just exorbitantly spend on gas so that you yourself receive that money back in the gas uh, as the miner yeah. to form the block. <laughs> that's so cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, it is clever. That's very smart. Yeah, no, people at the in in a year and a half, the SEC might catch up with that plan and be like, "Hey, wait a minute, <laughs> it'll be too late then." Well, yeah. yeah, you still have to claim the quote unquote claim the income, right? And I don't know that it's a good way to really launder money because, well, maybe it is. Well, it, none of it is. That's that's. Well, like drug money. If it's like drug money, then you're like, "Oh, it's not drug money; it's mining money." You know. <laughs> But yeah. that's that's Mark Wilcox's point, right? Like that, there only the super private crypto coins are actually capable of doing yeah. uh, cryptocurrency is capable of doing uh, that kind of anonymous transaction, and everything else is actually an illuminating of the money space. Yeah. I think that's a really interesting contention of his. To some extent, I mean, you have like coin joins on Bitcoin, though. Mm -hmm. You know. But yeah, I do think probably, you know, if you're if you're wanting to like launder money or like transfer like, you know, money for a hitman or something, probably like Grin or Zcash is probably better. I just use gold for my hitman. I don't know about <laughs> you guys, but that also that also does the job. Yeah. Like it does keep fingerprints yeah. really well though. Yeah, by, by carrier <laughs> yeah. I re I re-engineered them from DNA I got at the Smithsonian of the last carrier pigeon. <laughs> now we're good to go. All right. Well, cool, guys. I think we've got a, a plan here. So we'll see you all again on on Saturday. 
And uh, I'll go ahead and stop the recording, but also feel free to hang out and we can talk about whatever. So. I kind of, since Mark is here, if Mark is not 